Greetings, everyone. I'm Wei Dongzhang from Alibaba Group. I'm delighted to be here to share the evolution of Alibaba Elastic Block Store over the past 12 years, as well as the experience and lessons we have gained throughout this journey. We are no stranger to cloud computing these days. Users can subscribe computing resources in the form of virtual machines, and for storage, we can virtualize disks as block devices. This is what we call Elastic Block Store. For, her, for high availability and elasticity, simply co-locating the disks with virtual machines may not be a good choice. For example, a node can only host a certain of number of disks, thereby limiting the scalability. And more importantly, these disks can crash and lose data. Therefore, for modern cloud block store, we usually adopt the compute storage disaggregation where the compute nodes and the storage nodes are placed on different clusters and interconnected via data center network. But how do we build the storage end to meet the demands? In this talk, we focus on the design of such a block store and introduce lessons along this evolution. Part one. I will introduce three generations of cloud block store at Alibaba. In the first generation, our goal is simple, reusing mature and straightforward design for fast development and deployment. First, we partition a user's virtual disk, namely its, namely its logical block address as a series of fixed size chunks. Then we set up a two-layer architecture. In the first layer, we use a set of block servers, semantic translation, and identify three trunk servers for three-way replication. The trunk servers treat each, each, run, each, each trunk as an EST4 file and perform the corresponding I.O. For simplicity, EBS1 has two design features. First, any user's modifications on the virtual disk are essentially reflect on the corresponding EST4 files. Therefore, this follows in-place updates. Moreover, we adopt end-to-one -end mapping between virtual disk and the block servers. In other words, each virtual disk is only managed by a block server, and a block server can host multiple virtual disks. EBS1 released in 2012 and has served over 1 million virtual disks. But the feature of EBS1 can turn into limitations as time goes. First, with more users use our service, workload burst become common. Under the end-to-end -end mapping, hot virtual disks can easily drain the resource of a block server and impact other virtual disks. Note that migrating hot virtual disks to other block servers may not be useful as the migration can take a longer time than the burst. Second, SSD become more accessible back then, but with a much higher price tag. Therefore, we want to use data compression and erasure coding to save the space cost. But with in-place updates, this can be challenging due to the unalignment. So in EBS2, our goal is to improve the performance by using advanced hardware like SSD. At the same time, we do not want to waste too much space. So the first architectural change we made is to use an independent file lawyer service, namely our distributed file system, Pangu. To meet the features of SSD, Pangu is an append-only file system. Around this change, we also adapt the block servers. First, we use disk segmentation instead of partitioning virtual disk into chunks for better load balancing. Second, we further embed the log structure block device core, we call it RSBD for short, in each block server to convert incoming I.O. to append-only ones, as we are now using Pangu as our backend. Finally, we ask for data to be written to Pangu. To elevate hotspots in EBS1, EBS2 partitions the virtual disk's logical block address 
into several 128 gigabyte segment groups, each of which further comprise multiple 32 gigabyte segments. Block servers in EBS2 operate at the granularity of segments. Further, EBS2 organizes the segment group as a series of data sectors and allocates them to the segments in a round robin fashion. With the pan only backend, one important thing is the data structure. RSBD converts the incoming I.O. to a pan only one and uses a self enclosed format, which is a 4 kilobyte data with 64 bytes. Now, after conversion, RSBD persists the data to the Pangu and return acknowledgement to users. But if there is a failure, we have, to, we have to scan all the data files for locating the data. To speed up this process, we set up a transaction file which records the metadata of most recent writes. Likewise, for speed up read, we use RSM lag in memory index map. Recall that <coughs> the other issue we face in the EBS1 is that we are not able to perform original coding or compression due to unalignment. Now, with a pan only file system, we can use the garbage collection opportunity. Specifically, when we collect valid data from victim segments, we can perform original coding and compression and write them to the Pangu in a different format called the EC file. As a result, we reduce the space cost from 3 to 0 0.69. We released EBS2 in 2015 and scaled to more than 500 clusters for 2 million virtual disks. EBS2 could provide a virtual disk with an average write latency of 100 microseconds, a max IOPS of 1 million, and a max throughput of 4,000 megabyte per second for the guest. But again, the features become limitations. With the SSD press getting lower, we now realize the bottleneck has shifted from space to traffic. With our garbage collection for original coding policy, we observe that the writing one copy of data now leaves 4.69 footprint on the traffic. This is this is even much higher than the EBS one. One might suggest, hi, why don't you guys just perform foreground compression and the original coding? First, small rests are popular, but original coding requests a data at least 16 kilobytes to original code it. Simply re waiting for enough data can introduce actual latency. Second, even if we have enough data for original coding, directly use CPU for data compression can incur a really high latency. For example, 16 kilobytes means 25 microseconds. Our end-to-end -end SLO is around 100 microseconds. So this is a burden we cannot carry. So EBS3 is a, with a straight, straightforward goal. That is, we want to reduce traffic amplification, but we do not want any performance loss. So our answer is a bifurcated red pass. In the first branch, all users write requests from different users and segments are mixed together and then sent to the hardware acceleration card for compression. We call this mix and compressed file, the journal file, and persist to the Pangu with the original coding. After processing, uh, after processing the journal file, we can send, we can send the acknowledgement to users, but we never can read the journal file unless there is a cross and we have to do a failover. Instead, in Blau Server, we also set up segment cache to ac accumulate read requests by segments. When receiving enough data, 
we compress them and process them in a larger razor coding on a segment basis. Therefore, we are able to achieve fast compression because we use IPG for acceleration and fast razor coding due to we are able to mix data from different user requests. EBS3 has, has been deployed in over 100 storage, storage clusters, serving more than 500,000 worth of disks since released in 2019. EBS3 offers comparable performance to EBS2. So, at the end of the day, what we have achieved? On the front, we have 0 0.9 traffic amplification for journal file. Back dump had 0 0.69. In total, the traffic amplification had dropped from 4.69 to 1.59. This slide presents a comparison of the three generations of EBS in terms of performance, sp performance space cost, and traffic amplification. It can be observed that with each generation, EBS EB experienced significant, significant significant improvements in performance accompanied by substantial reduction in space costs and the traffic amplification. Part two, unlike common block devices, cloud block devices offer higher elasticity. Next, I will discuss the elasticity of EBS from four metrics. The first metric is latency. The latency of a virtual disk is determined by the architecture specifically the path a request has traveled. For example, as shown in this figure, <coughs> it presents the breakdown of average latency for eight kilobytes random read-write operations across different generations of EBS. The latency of an EBS2 backed virtual disk is constrained by the latency of the two hop network and the software stack processing and the physical SSD. Hence, the elasticity of latency is inherently cross-grained, reflecting the varying levels of time overhead and the various architectures. Clearly, the key to improving average latency is reducing the hardware processing overhead. Therefore, we built EBSX, targeting latency-sensitive sensitive scenarios. EBSX installs the persistent memory inside the block servers and directly stores the data in p-memory with three-way replication. Compared to EBS2 and EBS3, EBSX skips the second hop network and drastically speeds up the disk I.O. with p-memory. For space inefficiency, data in p-memory would be eventually flushed to Pangu. A user request may, may not be always served in time due to the hardware failures, misconfigurations, software bugs, or simply resource contentions. This figure presents the breakdown of file nice percentile latency, a common threshold for defining the tile latency among EBS3 clusters. We observe that the blow server processing, such as non-IO RPC, Destruction in the IO thread, background protocol scrubbing, and the index compaction accounts for the majority of the tail latency. The, uh, this observ observation may sound rather counterintuitive as the hardware related issues are usually bl blamed as the corporates. In the con context of EBS, we often discuss the, the elasticity of throughput and IO. IOPS together because the two metrics are often constrained by the same set of mechanisms. There are two key lessons about throughput and IOPS. The first lesson here is that the upper bound of a virtual disk throughput and IOPS is determined by the client, as the back end can easily scale with parallelism. Second, the high throughput and IOPS is often Deserved, but not always needed. With high throughput and IOPS enabled by block client and block server optimizations, 
efficiently allocating throughput and IOPS to virtual disks is the next step. Unlikely, the cross-grained elasticity in latency users can subscribe throughput and IOPS on demand without alerting the capacity. This is called auto performance level, auto PR for short. One, dis one distinctive aspect of auto PR virtual disk is that the its throughput can, can, dynam can dynamically change in real time according to the user's actual needs without requiring any alteration to the capacity of the virtual disk. This stands in stark contrast to the traditional block devices. However, we discovered that the throughput and the IOPS in production is often over-provisioned by users to handle the sporadic workload bursts. For better resource efficiency, we have, we have proposed the base and the burst strategy. Using this strategy to cope with the workload specs can be more economically beneficial for both users and the cloud vendors. Magic 4, capacity. The segmentation design enables EBS with seamless support for virtual disk resizing by adding or removing segment groups. EBS currently supports virtual disk size ranging from 1 gigabyte to 64 terabyte. Thanks to the hard link feature of Pangu files, EBS now allows the creation of up to 10,000 virtual disks in just one minute. Part 3, other topics. Due to time constraints, today I can only share the evolution of three generations of EBS and one of the key features of Cloud Block Store, the elasticity. The remaining three parts of our paper, availability, offloading, and the discussion of alternative solutions are equally crucial for the development of EBS. We have gained significant experience and license in these areas as well. All, all, of, all of these discussions are fully present in the, in the paper. That concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Yeah.